clean car examination of the musculoskeletal skeletal system, movement of the vertebral column, lumbar region. The articular facets lie in the um, anterior posterior plane and they lock in greatly limit rotation of the bodies on each other. Flexion and extension are free and a good deal of abduction is possible. Combination of these movements produces circumduction but um, practically no rotation is possible. You know, we test for the range of spinal movements. In the cervical spine, we test for flexion and extension uh, movements and here the patient to touch his chest for where his chin as far as possible and then let the patient extend the neck backwards as far as possible it is rotation by turning the head to um, the right and then the left it is a lateral flexion by letting the patient touch the shoulder with the ear as far as possible it is for lateral flexion to the left and then to the right those are spine movements are tested for by chest expansion and when you use the nipple as the reference point, the women use the position just beneath the breast with the patient's hands above the head. They measure the circumference of the chest with the tip. If the patient take deep breaths in and out and measure the chest circumference at the end of inspiration and expiration. You make three rounds and take the best of the readings. The chest expansion should be more than six centimeters in a normal subject. Again, um, sequential measurements are more um, significant than single measurements. All the range of movements of, this, of the spine originates from the lumbar um, spine section. It is for flexion of the lumbar spine by letting the patient touch the floor with his hands as far as he can and let him lean backwards as far as he can to test for extension. It is rotation of the right and then to the left. It is for lateral flexion by letting the patient touch the outer part of the leg with his arm as far as possible on both the right and the left sides. I will be aware of certain pitfalls as the patient can perform normal flexion despite fixed lumbar spine as the pelvis moves to achieve the movement. If you get full flexion in the normal subject, the lumbar lordosis becomes straight. To test for lumbar and spinal mobility, um, spread the fingers on the lumbar spine and um, one will find that um, a finger spread out in lumbar flexion and they are brought close to get an extension of the lumbar spine. Rotational movements of the spine is tested with the pelvis fixed and the spine rotated. When the patient sits on the couch, um, this fixes the pelvis and I assess rotation of the spine with the pelvis fixed. It tests for range of movements of the lumbar spine in conditions such as um, ankylosis spondylitis and you identify the temples of venous at the junction of lumbar 5 and sacrum. and draw a horizontal line at this junction. Then using a tip you measure vertically a length of 15 centimeters with the patient standing upright and you mark the point on the skin. Let him bend forward in maximal flexion and measure this length. In a normal person, this length should increase about 8 centimeters. And single measurements are not as um, significant as sequential measurements, as the sequential measurements give the progress of disease. In ankylosing spondylitis, the measurement should be carried out at the same time of the day as the patients are stiffer in the morning than in the afternoon. In ankylosing spondylitis, the distance A and B um, is less. It is for range of movements of the lumbar spine. 
The inhabitant has scoliosis or standing. Observe what happens on flexion. If the scoliosis disappears on flexion and it is a recently acquired deformity and the problems are due to muscle spasm. Um, if the scoliosis remains the same or deteriorates during flexion, then it is a development abnormality. To test um, the degree of kyphosis of the cervical spine, you get a patient to stand against the wall with the heel um, sacrament or supports against the wall. It is easy in all these subjects, but patients with ankylosis spondylitis with cervical kyphosis, um, it's not possible to put the occiput against the wall. So you measure the distance from the wall to the occiput, and this gives the degree of flexion kyphosis of the um, cervical spine. So now we palpate the neck for cervical, um, for spinal processes, um, interspinous ligaments of the cervical spine, and muscles for um, isolated localized tenderness of or muscle spasm. Also, cervical um, spine problems can lead to fat pain in um, trapezius muscles and shoulder ghetto area, and also interscapular area. So, it palpates the total spine with firm pressure um, over the spinous processes for localized tenderness. We palpate the interspinal spaces and laterally um, for paraspinal muscles. It palpates the lumbar spine in a similar manner to palpate um, the dorsal spine. Also palpates the paraspinal muscles in the sacrum. Exert firm pressure over the um, sacrum and coccyx for local tenderness. In the sacral, I I like this. The pain is referred to the buttocks and posterior thigh. In these movements across the sacral joints, and this produces pain in the buttocks and posterior space of thighs. Femoral stretch test is performed by the patient lying prone and extending the thigh. In the positive test, there is pain in the back muscles and muscle spasm in the anterior muscle. If the pain reduces to the anterior thigh as far as the knee, think of um, roots deletion of L3 and L4 in the distribution of the femoral nerve. Fair assessment of the sacrum um, iliac joint is performed by firm downward pressure on the iliac crest to induce movements across the sacroiliac joints. The pressure produces pain, flex, flex the hip and knee, irritates the hip joints, laterally and exerts firm pressure on the hip along the axis of the femur. But this induces movements across the um, sacroiliac joints, resulting in pain on the back toes. If the patient has back pain radiating to the leg, especially in the posterior and posterior lateral side, is associated with loss of sensation. This suggests L5 um, as a root compression.